this morning. We just sang about how God's love endures forever. I need to hear an amen on that, right? Amen. Nothing else is going to endure forever. Uh-uh. You know what? We, we are grateful to be here this morning. I'm grateful to sing these songs, grateful to celebrate Palm Sunday with all of you. And uh, just, uh, you know, I'm, I'm a little tired, I ain't going to lie. Um, yesterday, a crew of us were helping out at a uh, place called Friendship Towers. Um, appreciate Rachel Bloom uh, help put it together in our board. And we served with our brothers and sisters over at Northview. It was really cool. And uh, they were really excited to see us. They were, it, it was early in the morning, like 8 or something, and we were all there, and we were smiling, and they even made a comment like, man, this is, y'all are a different volunteer crew, and we, we felt good about that. You know, like, we should be different. We love Jesus. We're, we, we're supposed to have a different spirit about us, uh, but it was really cool kind of to work side by side with our brothers and sisters uh, over there at Northview Church, so uh, hopefully we'll get to do more of that stuff in the future. And uh, this Friday night, and uh, I think uh, we're going to have some folks from our sister congregation, uh, Bridgepoint, so that's exciting, to come uh, worship Good Friday w- on our Good Friday service. And we're going to uh, get together with the staff of the Bridgepoint Church and have just kind of like a joint staff meeting, just kind of enjoy each other and get to know each other more. And uh, so I just think it's helpful for y'all to hear stuff like that, um, things that are going on in our sister congregation. So amen. Palm Sunday, here we are. Ah, Holy Week is what this is called. Holy Week. All around the world, uh, most, you know, Christian groups are, are, are recognizing this, this day, Sunday, uh, the Sunday before Easter, called Palm Sunday. And uh, what I was trying to do is figure out, is there any connection between what we've been studying in Ephesians to Holy Week? And I thought, yes, Jesus. <laughs> Alexa, you see that, bro? That's wisdom right there, bro, right there. No, I'm going to go a little further. But I did, I remembered a passage, and I said, I think this correlates to the spirit of what's going on on Palm Sunday. And uh, we'll see if it, if it comes up. Remember this passage? Do not get drunk on wine, which leads to debauchery. Instead, be filled with the spirit Speaking to one another with psalms. Okay, that's going to come up later in our time when we look at Palm Sunday scriptures. Speaking to one another with psalms, hymns, and songs from the Spirit. Sing and make music from your heart to the Lord, always giving thanks to God, the Father for everything, in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. Give thanks to the Lord. We just sang about that, right? And we're going to look at, this comes into play uh, when we look at some of the passages in Palm Sunday. So we just made a bridge between Ephesians and Palm Sunday, so we're keeping our theme going this year. So let's go to God in prayer and really pray that we can really experience what God wants us to this morning. Let's go to God. Lord, we do give thanks to you. You are good and We are grateful that your love endures forever. This world that we live in today seems like just craziness is going to reign supreme. and Anger and hatred and war. Gangs taking over entire countries and just craziness going on. Wars. Just people getting diagnosed with diseases left and right. And Even just got a text this morning praying for, I didn't know, praying for Crystal, you know. Um, I guess it's hard to lose a parent, so we just pray for her. And um, there's a lot going on, and here we are this morning wanting to worship you, God. Wanting to experience something different than what we experience when we pick up our phones or watch TV or whatever else in this mundane world sometimes. We want to come into this house of worship, and we want to experience you. So grateful to hear the broils and sharing about their experience of coming to faith and how, how powerful that experience with Jesus can be just to, to turn their lives over. And Lord, I pray that we can look at these passages this morning and not be fooled by power. Lord, help us not be intoxicated 
by the adulation of the crowds. Please, Lord, I pray that we follow the example of Jesus who figured out your way, God, that your way ultimately is the source of the greatest power there is. But the pathway to get there, so many of us don't want to take that path. But I pray that that won't be said about this congregation here. I pray we embrace the path of Jesus, even if it's not the path that gets the most likes or the crowd to adore us. Give us the courage to follow the path of Jesus. And we pray this in his name. Amen. 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 If you have a Bible, turn it on, open it up. I'm going to do some reading in the, from the Bible uh, today. We're going to look in John's gospel. Earlier, we looked at the passage in Matthew's gospel. Well, we're going to look in John's gospel, and we're going to be in John chapter 12. But in order to really appreciate what's happening in John 12, you know, you, where we're going to pick it up, what previously happened is that Jesus performed the greatest sign, John calls it, that points to who he really is. A sign points to something. We might refer to it more as a miracle. What was the greatest miracle in John that, that Jesus performed? Lazarus. Y'all remember that? How many days was Lazarus in that tomb? He was in there. He was in there. Three days, right? Woo! Right? And Jesus comes. Lazarus, get up. Come on out. You know? And Lazarus walk out. Woo! That must have been a moment. That was a moment for a lot of people. A lot of crowds started following Jesus after that. And you can understand why. So huge crowds are now like, hold up. Because they don't just want to see Jesus. Guess who they want to see? They want to see Lazarus too. I mean, wouldn't you? Man, what was that like, bro? You were dead. Ooh, you know, like, wow, you here, you know? So you got this huge crowd that's with Jesus. Now, there's another group of people that didn't like that Jesus had this huge crowd. Y'all know who that was? The Pharisees. Why didn't they like that? Taking, their, take, taking the members from their church. Stealing the sheep. Jesus is taking these people away. And you see this in John chapter 12, you know, in verse 10, the chief priest made plans to kill Lazarus as well. For on account of him, many of the Jews were going over to Jesus and believing in him. The Pharisees were losing their power and influence, and that didn't feel good. They liked that power, the influence over people. And, they, and Jesus was a threat. All the crowds are going to him. So Jesus already has his crowd. And in John 12, picking up in verse 12, it says, The next day, the great crowd that had come for the festival heard that Jesus was on his way to Jerusalem. So I don't know if you catch this, but there was already a crowd with Jesus while he was in Bethany. But now people heard they were already in Jerusalem. They getting ready for what we call Holy Week. Well, for them it was Passover. They were already there getting preparations. So they hear Jesus is coming. And so a big crowd goes to meet Jesus as he's coming up. So now you've got two crowds. There's a lot of people going on right here. And so just to give you a feel for kind of the the, 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 the map of things, because sometimes we're not familiar. Bethany is where Jesus was, and he was walking from Bethany up to Jerusalem. And so in verse 13, they took palm branches and went out to meet him, shouting, Hosanna, blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Blessed is the king of Israel. And you see that we talked earlier Kevin and Noel talked about this concept of, of palm branches being laid down. And that was a, really a sign of, for, that they would usually uh, reserve for, for military leaders or, or political leaders. And even in Jewish history, when they were able to get their own independence, 
and the Maccabees won that for them, they would come in triumphant and people would lay down palm branches. So this is a nationalistic, this is Israel, we need to win again. We've been under the thumb of these other people for too long. We need somebody to come like the Maccabees and free us from these Romans. We need somebody with power, with strength. And palm branches were was a sign of, of kind of this political power. You know, we know that somebody's coming to finally bring Israel back to its prominence the way it should be. And we don't know nothing about palm branches. We don't have that in our culture. But I think we, we get it, right? I mean, if you hear about a, a motorcade or something like that, you know, people waving flags, right? They, some people might even put their hand over their heart or something like that. This is, this is about nationalistic fervor, you know? Like, we, we, we can kind of we can kind of get that to show respect and these types of things. Even in Israel, you know, the sign of the palm branch was a definite sign of, of kind of a political uh, uh, power and militaristic might. It was even minted on coins. Um, so this is even one of the coins that, that has the palm branch. So this was a sign that was very prevalent. But when you look at this passage, Hosanna, blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Y'all got a little footnote in your Bible? What's your footnote say? Anybody got a footnote? Does it have a scripture on there? Psalm 118. Probably be a good idea to go to Psalm 118 right now then. You know how I am. Y'all know me. You can't be, you can't be having scripture sometimes. Don't even refer back to it. Let's go into Psalm 118 together. There's a reason that it's in here. Look at the very first verse of Psalm 118. Give thanks to the Lord for he is good. His love endures forever. Let Israel say his love endures forever. Let the house of Aaron say his love endures forever. Let those who fear the Lord say, let's say it together, his love endures forever. When hard-pressed, I cried to the Lord. He brought me to a spacious place. Isn't that what we heard from Kevin and Noel? The Lord is with me. I will not be afraid. What can mere mortals do to me? The Lord is with me. He is my helper. I look in triumph on my enemies. You see the spirit? Of, this, is, this is what it's getting at. It is better to take refuge in the Lord than to trust in humans. A lot of folks said amen on that. It is better to take refuge in the Lord than to trust in princes, in presidents, in Congress. Oh, oh can I get an amen on that too? Oh, oh, thank you. That's what a prince represents. Come on now. Where your trust going to be? Let's keep moving down in this psalm for time's sake. Verse 22. The stone the builders rejected has become the cornerstone. The Lord has done this, and it is marvelous in our eyes. The Lord has done it this very day. Let us, be jo re let us rejoice today and be glad. And here's the part that we read earlier. Lord, save us. Hosanna. Some of your translations might say, Lord, save us, we beseech you. Like, hurry up. Save us now. Like, urgent. Save us, Lord. Grant us success. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. From the house of the Lord, we bless you. Now, if you notice, there's something a little different. Hosanna, we got that. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. We got that in John. But in John, they, there's a little different phrase in there. What's, hmm, what's going on? What is, what is that phrase in John that's not in Psalm 118? But the people definitely insert it. And in John 12, the end of verse 13, it says, Blessed is the king of Israel. Do you see what I'm saying? That's what the crowds added. Oh, no, we know what this moment is. This is the king coming up. He raising folks from the dead. Because earlier, see, Jesus ain't stupid. Earlier, 
Jesus fed 5,000 people, took some fish and some loaves. You remember that? But do you remember the response of the crowds? You know what they wanted to do? John, John 6, same gospel. You know, when Jesus realized, verse 15, that they were about to come and take him by force to what? To make him king. Take him by force to make him king. He withdrew again to the mountain by himself. No, that's not the way this is going to go down. No, 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 no. No, that's not how we're doing things. Crowd just want power. Crowd power hungry. Because when we empower, we can tell other people what to do. Right? And so this is what's going on. Blessed be the king of Israel. This is, this is, they, they have their guy. They are, this is our guy. And so Jesus says, oh, I appreciate y'all quoting a scripture. Amen. He said, I'm going to one up y'all. I'm not going to quote a scripture. I'm going to act one out. We're going to play scripture charades real quick. <laughs> right? Jesus doesn't say a word. Jesus said, oh, you talking about a king? Oh, okay, I, okay. I'm going to agree with y'all. You got that part right. I am a king. But let's look at the scripture that he's talking about. I ain't going to make you flip to Zechariah because it's going to take you too long to find it. I'm a gracious man. I'm going to go ahead and put them words up here. I don't want you looking at the table of contents and all that, feeling all embarrassed. Don't worry about it. It's okay. We all right. Zechariah 9, verse 9. See, your king comes to you. Triumphant and victorious is he, humble and riding on a donkey, on a coat, the foal of a donkey. Wait a minute. I think they got two different definitions of king going on at the same time. The crowds want a certain kind of king, and they using scriptures, and they quoting stuff, Talking about the king is coming. And Jesus said, oh, you're right. I am a king, but I'm, I'm humble. And we talked about that word before. It talks about being a lowly position. Okay? And he's riding on a donkey, not a war horse. When they come in victorious on that war horse, no, on a donkey. And some of us stop at just, at just this verse. We don't keep reading. We need to keep reading the next verse, y'all. This king, oh, okay, he will cut off the chariot from Ephraim. What's the chariot used for? Whoa. And the war horse from Jerusalem. And the battle, hey, he's going to cut that off. He's going to cut the battle ball. Uh-uh. But you know what he will do? He will command peace to the nations. His dominion, oh, he has dominion. <laughs> But you know what? It shall, you know what? From sea to sea and from the river to the ends of the earth. Jesus said, that's who I am. If you want to see where I fulfill scripture, this is the scripture that I'm fulfilling. I am the king, but I'm not the type of king you want. So you got a decision to make. Jesus called him to a decision right there. Will you follow a humble king? Will you follow a king who is not wrapped up in power, in a power grab. Will you follow? What do you need to give your allegiance? Do you need somebody with the most likes? Because in this moment, let me tell you, most men, most women, you got that many people screaming for you, you're going to be like, yeah, let's get, I'm in, let's go. I mean, you, what y'all want to do? Let's go. I mean, most people, when you got that, that many people behind you, just say, you're the man, you're amazing, you're awesome, you're great. What do you want to do? A lot of times you just get caught up in it. And Jesus in that moment didn't get caught up in it. And he literally said, I'm humble. I'm not here to, to, to live like you think kings should live. Are we comfortable with that kind of king? Let's keep reading because the story is not over. John chapter 12. You see, the crowds, they want power. They want popularity to push their platform, right? Their preferences. And Jesus is talking about, I'm not, that's not where I'm going. The disciples, they don't know what's going on. They're confused. Probably half of them probably like, this is great. This is what, isn't this what Jesus wanted? All the crowds, 
But the, the Bible even says in verse 16, they didn't even understand all what was going on. Then verse 19 of John 12, you know what the Pharisees said? This is getting us nowhere. The whole world is going after him. Once again, getting you nowhere, where are you trying to get? We trying to get the power. We want the people behind us. So everybody around Jesus is, is, is trying to get the same thing pretty much. And only Jesus is the one that has the true purpose of God in mind. Even Greeks come. I mean, it's like literally the whole world, right? This is, this is the whole world. You got the, the men from the east at his birth come. And now towards the end of his life, those from the west. Everybody coming to see Jesus. The Pharisees were right, right? In verse 23, Jesus says, The hour has come for the Son of Man to be glorified. Very truly, I tell you, unless a kernel of wheat falls to the ground and dies, it remains only a single seed. But if it dies, it produces many seeds. Anyone who loves their life will lose it, while anyone who hates their life in this world will keep it for eternal life. Whoever serves me must follow me. And where I am, my servant also will be. My father will honor the one who serves me. Now, my soul is troubled. And what shall I say? Father, save me from this hour? <laughs> no. It's for this very reason I came to this hour. Father, glorify your name. What is Palm Sunday? It's about Jesus who knew who he was. And he knew what his role was in this world. And it's to show us the way God wants all of us to live. If we want to serve Jesus, we got to be willing to die too. And I'm not saying get lynched like he literally got. I'm not saying we're going to get publicly murdered. That's not what I'm saying. In some countries, honestly, that is still happening. So I, I don't know if y'all realize that, but people to, today are, are still being murdered for their faith in Jesus. In some countries, if you open this, some countries, you can't even get this into the country. So, so some people, when they make a profession of faith <laughs> in Jesus, it is a life or death situation, even today. But isn't this what we call to do is to lay down our lives for, for the benefit of somebody else? That's, that's what we, 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 our life has already been taken care of, all right? Save us. Okay, God, God you're a Christian. You have been saved. You, you have a life to look forward to even after you breathe your last earthly breath. So while you still have breath, we can lay our lives down. We don't have to go after power and popularity as if everything rides on it. That's not going to lead you to the place where Jesus is. You can, get, you can follow the crowd. Everybody clapping. That's awesome. But you might not be with Jesus. But you sure might be popular. That's a challenge, even for, for a minister, right? Don't, don't we all want the big church and all the people to come to our church? Well, if we just act like everybody else in the world, I don't even really think we'd be in the church. We got to follow Jesus, man. That means we got to be willing to die. We got to be humble. And we can't be out there grabbing for power and popularity just like everybody. Anybody can do that. It doesn't take the Holy Spirit to be humble. <laughs> we, got, we need God's Spirit so we can be humble. But this world, I'm telling you, even Christian folk out there crying. And I say, say, Jeff, you repeat yourself. You realize that. I say, well, you know what? I do. That's a part of training. I tell you what, I remember as a young Christian, I went to church every Sunday. I say, it's either going to be Matthew 28, Acts 2, or Jeremiah 29, 11. <laughs> I don't care what the topic is. Somehow they're going to weave that up in there. Go and make disciples. What do I, must I do? Be baptized in the name of Jesus. Well, don't you know the Lord got a plan for you? Any, every week. <laughs> Repetition. I get it. Well, I'm here to tell you every week if I have to. I'm going to tell you right now, there's folks call themselves Christian that are power, that are hungry for power. Political power, they want it. In the, in the name of Jesus. And I'm, I'm going to tell you, I believe this message, this John 12, is Jesus saying, that's not what I came for. I don't need political power to get what I'm doing. He doesn't need it. You pick, up, I get, I, you pick up a 
a, a history of Christianity textbook. Find one, anyone. I'm willing to bet 95% of them will say that the Christian faith had strong power for the first three centuries. And they'll say, most scholars will say, the moment it stopped having power, guess what? Was with the moment that the, the leader, the emperor became a Christian and basically said, everybody's got to be a Christian now. And that's when it lost its power. When it had all the political power, it didn't have any impact in the world no more. How do you make sense of that? Because John 12 tells you, even Christians get power hungry, political power. We don't need it. Stop falling for the trick. And somebody going to tell you in the name of Jesus, you got to fight to get a law passed? Since when God going to make a, you don't be, bow your knee down to Jesus just because a law from Congress come out? What in the world are we talking about? <laughs> that, ain't, that doesn't work. We got to follow the path of Jesus, man. It's humble. It acknowledges, hey, there's political power, there's military power, amen. But that is not the pathway to follow Jesus. We don't need it. If we get it, it, it might not even help us. That's what history, like Mark Twain said, history may not repeat itself, but it sure does rhyme. <laughs> and I'm telling you, the crowds keep wanting political power. I'm telling you, even Christian crowds. And Jesus keeps saying, I don't need it. What do we need to remember about Palm Sunday is, you know what? His soul was troubled, but he still went through with it. I love the humanity of Jesus, but he knew what his purpose was. And I hope that we can all have that kind of heart. What are we here to do? We're here to follow in the way of Jesus. That means we might not be popular. That means we might not have people saying, way to go. I love your choices. Oh, how you spend your money, that's awesome. You're going to give to, you know, mission work, well done. Great way to use your money. Oh, you serve at your church, oh, wow. Oh, will you go to your church more than one day a week? Wow, that's a lot of commitment. You might be scorned, laughed at, sarcastic remarks, and all of that. You might not be, you know, invited to all the same stuff. But some of us want it so bad. We want it so bad. We want to be liked so bad. I'm just telling you, sometimes that's not the path to Jesus. And you can get, you can get all that popularity and all those likes, but you know you're going to end up probably real far away from Jesus. And that's what Palm Sunday, I think, tells us. Because we know that these same people cheering for him on, on this Sunday. Come on. See, on Sunday, they, they cheering. Oh, you're the king. Some of the same folk going to be singing a different song yep. come Friday. Because yep. <laughs> their purpose wasn't about humility. It was about personal preference, popularity, and stuff like that, and power. Those are the people who end up screaming something totally different come Friday. Let that not be said about us. In verse 31, Jesus says, Now is the time for judgment on this world. Now the prince of this world will be driven out. And I, when I am lifted up from the earth, will draw all people to myself. He said this to show the kind of death he was going to die. People will be drawn to Jesus through his sacrificial death, through his willingness to be humble and not be all about political power, military power, money power, all of that. It's about dying. That's when he draws people to himself. Hello, church. That's how we draw people to ourselves. <laughs> Not to ourselves, as is like North River, but to the church. That's what it's all about. These are the themes to give thanks to God in the name of Jesus. To remember he is a liberating king. Kevin and Noel both shared, hey, th th Jesus liberates. But he's not using politics to liberate you. He uses his sacrificial death. So don't hunger and thirst for popularity or power. Don't do it. Lay down your life. Let it benefit somebody else. And that's when we can start to lean into what it means to be a true follower of the Lord Jesus. So this Holy Week, we lean into 
to this day, we give thanks to the Lord for his love endures forever. And on Friday, when we come in, on Good Friday, we're going to lean into what it felt like when the folks that yelled crucify him drowned out the voices of he's our king. So I welcome you back on Friday night to lean into that moment too. Because if we can lean into these moments, how fickle crowds can be, lean into it, fickle crowds. Lean into Good Friday, come up on Friday, what it means to lose the light. Because then if you can really lean into that, man, I'm going to tell you what, come Sunday morning, you'll be ready to celebrate. Amen? Amen. But before there's Easter Sunday, there's Good Friday, and I'll see you on Friday night. Amen. Amen.